welcome back to another episode of Craven Some Raven. And uh, in this episode, I'm just going to be going over my game picks, uh, the dick picks episode, as you will. Uh, normally, I'm jo joined by a co-host, but he's not able to join. And I just wanted to get my picks out there just so when it comes to next week, I can have them. And you know I didn't lie about them because I have been doing fairly decent. You know, obviously not, not killing it, killing it, but, you know, going positive each and every week. So this week we only got, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can count to 13, guys, and there's the proof. So we only got 13 games this week as we got four teams on a bye. So two less games, or I guess six teams on a bye. Let me check this. It might be six, actually. Let me go on here and double check. No, just, just four teams. So there will be two less games. Duh. There's your math. So, uh, with that being said, um, I told I told my buddy to give me his game picks, but he has not done that yet. So hopefully he gets those to me before Sunday. So in the next time we do this, uh, we'll be able to go over this past week and how I destroyed the picks yet again. Um, <laughs> so, so that yeah, I, I try to have a schedule, but it doesn't ever end up working out. Um, because when it, the easiest way for me and him to meet up, it's at the beginning of the week. But like, I want to make my game picks like closer to the actual games. If that makes sense. It's like setting your fantasy lineup like on Monday. And I don't know what kind of psychopath does that and then doesn't change, doesn't tinker. It's someone who doesn't play. It's someone who just is checked out of your fantasy league. That's who does that. So I like to make these picks a little bit later. So it makes it harder for us to meet up and record the podcast um so i'm just gonna go over these games uh we already had one game that had started or already gone and went through uh the thursday night game the giants at the patriots uh i had picked the patriots i mean even if i like who would lie about that it, it was obviously the patriots that were gonna win i mean come on uh i'm assuming he picked the patriots he's a patriots fan so if he picked the giants i mean I don't know. I, I just put them down for you picked the Patriots. So we both got that one right. I'll just go ahead and say that. And I, I've said this before on the podcast. I bet the Giants in the spread at plus 17. Are you kidding me? They lost by 21. The spreads on the Patriots are ridiculous when it comes to betting. And I don't even understand it. You know? I don't understand it. It's fucking crazy. Fucking crazy, bro. So... Let's get into this. We got a London game. Uh, Cherry O, Chip Chip, Panthers versus the Bucks. A nice divisional matchup. Once again, Cam Newton injured, so not a factor. But CMC, Christian McCaffrey, looking like an MVP. When's the last time the MVP of the league was not a quarterback? I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you. But in this game, <clears throat> the Cherry O, Chip Chip game, I am going for the Bucks. I like what I've seen from the Bucks, and the Bucks already played the Panthers, and that was on a Thursday night. So anytime, apparently this year, when these teams meet up, it's in a weird situation. It's either on a Thursday night or in London. They can't get a regular home away schedule with these two, because you know Thursday night games are always weird. There's always weird results with them. Um, with their first meet up, there's like a lightning delay. There was a rainstorm. It was raining like crazy. So I think, you know, clear skies in London. Maybe it'll be cloudy. Maybe the the bruvs will be out. Hello, bro. What's up, bro? Uh, is that their slang? I really don't know. They'll be throwing soccer balls at the field. So I just have the bucks in this one. I really like uh, what Jameis Winston has been doing. I like his no-holds-bar mentality and actually being with a coach who knows how to produce an offense. So it's not just the blame Jameis Winston show. Where your crab legs at? Hmm, did you pay for those? Either way, <clears throat> they were given to him. So, I'm rooting for the Bucks in this one. Uh, I could very easily see the Panthers winning this one, but I'm going with the Bucks. Uh, next game, morning game, uh, 1 o'clock for you East Coast folks, is the Eagles versus the Vikings. And I had trouble deciding on this one because, you know, the Vikings, they have been looking better. They do have a good rushing attack. Uh, Kirk Cousins killed it last week. But I have no faith in Kirk Cousins, 
but also no faith in the Eagles' defense. But at the same time, the Eagles are now underdogs, so that's when they go ahead and beat their opponents. When people overlook the Eagles, that's when they're good. When people give them hype, they're not good. It's a very simple equation. Uh, but in this NFC matchup, two teams I think going to be vying for that one of those playoff spots in the NFC. Looking for a Super Bowl. I don't think either of them get it. But I have the Vikings winning this one. I'm, I'm going to be rooting for them. I don't know if I bet any money on this game. Let me go through my little my list here. All my all my bets, buddy. All my bets. Uh, I bet the over, and the over when I bet was set at 43 and a half. Uh, yeah, like I said, the Eagles' defense is trash, and the Vikings' offense looks like it could be rolling on all cylinders. And I could see the Vikings scored and scoring 30 points. And like I said, the Eagles, when they're underdogs, that's when they win. But they don't win defensively, right? They win with their offense putting up major points. So I think this game goes over 40, possibly go over 60. I could see both teams getting over 30 uh, each. So that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. You know, I could be completely wrong, and it could be a defensive battle. And who would have thunk it? But I'm going with the over on this one with the Vikings taking the dub. Uh, so the next game, uh, another morning game, or I guess for you guys, 1 o'clock afternoon game. One one o'clock Eastern. For me, it's morning game. It starts at eleven. Pretty simple. Uh, Albuquerque is two hours behind. Whether it comes to time or education, uh, either way. Um, next, I got the Redskins versus the Dolphins. And how the hell do you pick this game? Right, two of the worst teams. The Dolphins been tanking for Tua since like 2011. They're, they've they've been so trashed this year, even though the Ravens beat them the worst. Um, and the Redskins just fired their head coach. Are the Redskins going to get that new coach smell? Going to get that that new coach boost? Are the Dolphins finally going to have a terrible opponent and actually get the leg up on them? It's in Dolphins territory, down in the deep hole of Florida, in the penis of America. More like the taint. But it looks like a dick, right? Hanging off of America like that. Snorting blow and riding jet skis. <laughs> Dolphins. Um, welcome to Florida. So I had a really tough time deciding this one because I could see the Dolphins in the upset. But it's like, how is it an upset when the Redskins could be a top three pick? You know? How can they be an upset? But I'm going with the Redskins. I'm going with the FedEx, the FedExers, and Dan Snyder's terrible, terrible ownership. It, this is this is just a really tough game because I, I can't root for either one of them. Um, like conceptually, I don't know if that's even the right way to put that. But I can't feasibly root for either of them. Can't. I would never put my money on either of these teams, even though I think I bet this game oh okay i bet the over set at 41 i think both teams are just trash so i think you know you know garbage time at the end of the game when the losing team just puts up mad points and it never really matters it's because the team has already checked out they have won the game so handedly that they just kind of stop playing and let the other team kind of win i think that's what <clears throat> this game is going to be like for four quarters so 41 points i think both of them fuck it both teams get like 50 points each all all crazy. They score on all three phases. There's probably going to be two kick returns, two pick sixes. No, a fumble, a fumble six and a pick six. There's going to be a couple touchdowns with like reverses and fumble rooskies and uh, Philly specials, but Redskins specials, which is really racist, so don't look it up. Um, actually, look it up for me. I don't know if that's an actual thing. It'd be hilarious if it is racist. Uh so, yeah, I got the Redskins in this one. Uh, this, man, this is gonna be the best game of the week. Watch, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like the down to the wire best game of the week. I just like, I just like Terry McLaurin, and hopefully they put in Dwayne Haskins. You know, they're college bros, so maybe they just get it going. And the Dolphins, they have just checked out. They've gone to new waters, and they have been just blowing the NFL's blowhole. So. <clears throat> Next, I think, you know, we got a good matchup 
in this game, Texans at the Chiefs is a very good matchup. Texans coming off of a game where they put up 50-something points. Deshaun Watson was looking epic, epic, with Will Fuller streaking down the sideline. And then the Chiefs coming off a loss, looking piss poor. You know, one of the best offenses in a generation, right? Isn't that what people are saying? I've said it. I thought no one would be able to stop them. But then here come the Colts. Is Tyreek Hill going to play? You know, who fucking knows? But it's one of those things where <clears throat> an Andy Reid team in prime time with Patrick Mahomes. I don't think Patrick Mahomes, has he won in prime time? Has he? Like anytime the lights are on, have the Chiefs won? But luckily, this is a morning game, and I am picking the Chiefs with this one. I uh, I heard some stuff Ty- Tyreek Hill might play. So whether he does or he doesn't, I still think the Chiefs pull this one out. They're coming off a loss. They're going to be pissed off. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has, has been watching his commercials all week, and he's pissed off. He's been throwing footballs into his neighbor's house, into their hot dogs and all their steaks, and he's pissed off. He's going to start throwing it to his wide receivers. Travis Kelsey is actually going to catch him this week. The, uh, the Texans don't have, don't have a good defense right? Uh, The Chiefs don't have a good defense. So this is going to be a high-scoring game, right? Everyone thinks it is. I'm pretty sure I put money on this game. Let me go through my little thing here. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I got. I think I did. I think I did. I think I did. But I think the over-under was set super high. Yeah, I didn't even... Yeah, I didn't even bet on this game, because I'm pretty sure the the over-under was set like, like 58, something crazy like that. And I could see him still hitting it. It's just, it's not a smart bet to make. You know, I didn't want to put my money on that. I didn't want to touch it with my mouth. Um, going back a little bit, uh, I did, I just saw on my bet list, I put money on the Bucks to win. So I'm rooting for them to win because I have money on them winning. They are the underdogs in this game. But I think they can feasibly pull it out. You know, sometimes when they list an underdog, it's like, I don't understand why they're underdogs. But they seem like the team that's going to win. So... Back to the Chiefs, Texans. Yeah, the Texans. I just see them trying to do the same thing again, having the same exact game plan, because I don't think uh, their coach likes to switch things up. I like. I think he likes to do the same thing over and over again. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's why they kind of have these weeks where it's you score like 13 points and then you score 50 points. <clears throat> I don't think the Chiefs are necessarily going to be able to stop it but I think you know Andy Reid's a little bit better at scheming things up I think he's more willing to adapt you know so I got the Chiefs in this one uh looking for that looking for that win uh next game we got on the list another morning game one o'clock eastern uh Saints at the Jags now I I honestly was having trouble with this one I was having trouble I wanted to pick the Jags really bad I wanted to pick the Minshew. I wanted to be on his side. I love what I've seen him to DJ Chark. It's a thing of beauty. Um, Leonard Fournette, he'll break a huge run every game, it seems like, recently. But the Saints, they have a pretty good defensive line. And Sean Payton is still their head coach and offensive coordinator. At least I think he's the offensive coordinator. Um Drew Brees is close to coming back, but I do believe Teddy Bridgewater will be playing, will be starting, and he's done pretty well so far. You know, can the Jags stop Michael Thomas? They do have a really good defense. That's the only thing. The the Jags have a good defense, and the Saints are going to Jacksonville, going to the Jackson Hole, going to the the birthplace of Minshew. I don't know. If, I don't think he's from there, but he looks like he's a Jacksonville kind of guy. He's, he was made for Jacksonville. Like, Jacksonville put all their, their cesspools together and created a quarterback in Gardner Minshew. And boom, he's made, you know, sugar spice and everything trash and chemical Florida. And you got, and you got Minshew, the Jags quarterback. But I, I man, do I want, I, I've, I circled the Saints. Like, I picked the Saints. And when I pick these, I write the games down, and then, like, without, you know, previous knowledge, you know, maybe, like, looking at them a little bit, thinking about it for a second, I just circle them, go down the list, and circle them right away. Like, first reaction, circle them, because that's usually how I get the best results. When I tinker, that's when I lose, right? 
you know, like first glance, boom, usually your first instinct is right. But sometimes I've changed them and been right with that. I've changed them and been wrong and changed them and been right. I'm pretty sure I've, I've changed more and gotten them right than not. And this game, oh man, I've been betting against the Saints, right? Let's see, what did I do last week? Yeah, I picked the Bucks over the Saints last week, and I lost that one, and the Saints, Saints pulled that one out. Fuck. No, I'm not going to change this one. I'm going with the Saints, man. Um, I like the Jags' defense. I like what they're doing on offense, but it's still the Saints. They are still <clears throat> that next level above the Jaguars. And I just, they got the pool there, though. Man, they got that pool, that home field pool advantage. Come on in. The water's warm. Nah, going with the Saints. Uh, I think they pulled out. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Uh, let me see. Let's just lay these out just so I can have a quick glance and see. Oh. So the Saints, or the Jags, are actually favorited in this game because I put money on the Saints in the spread at plus one. So basically the Saints have to win. So they're predicting a very close game. Underdog by, like, not much at all. Uh, so, yeah, what's this one? Oh, that one's done. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, the Saints can be down by one. I guess they have to either tie or win. That's kind of a dumb bet, now that I'm thinking about it. Probably would have been better just to bet the Saints winning because that's, with this number, a plus one, that's basically what I'm doing. Right, I'm betting them to win because you can't lose by half a point. Well, I guess if they lose by a point, I still win the bet, right? At plus one. Pretty sure that's how it works. So, if the Saints lose, it would be by one point. If I'm being honest, so that's it. I guess it would. It's more of a safe bet, I guess. I guess. So, Saints found that one. We're gonna. We're going one, two, three, four. Uh, we're already five and zero. Oh, Always. Uh, next game, we're going to have a close eye on uh, another 1 o'clock game. Seahawks at the Browns. Now, the Browns just got thumped on Monday night, but they are returning home, back to home kitchens uh, to bake some touchdowns. I don't know. The Seahawks are winning this one. I think the Seahawks, they're consistently good. Uh, I don't think they're elite or anything. I think they they get the job done. Uh, Russell Wilson knows how to get the job done. Uh, they have Damian Clowney, I guess. I don't know if he's doing much. But you get pressure on Baker Mayfield, and you're going to destroy that team. I.e., look at the Ravens. No pressure. You lose by fucking forever. I don't know. You lose by 1,000 points. That's what it felt like. But they put a 40 on you if you can't get pressure on them. I think the Seahawks, they are able to put pressure on them. I think they're able to take advantage of the defense with some deep shots with uh, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lackett. So I think the Seahawks win this one in their regular uniforms. No more highlighters, okay? Okay. Uh, next, we're getting into the afternoon games, or I guess the second slate of afternoon games, where it comes on at 4 o'clock Eastern for you guys, for me, like 2 o'clock. Uh, we got the 49ers versus the Rams. I didn't write the the Ravens game down here. That's why I'm missing a game. Duh. Oh, so I, I guess I'll get to that one at the end. Um, so the 49ers versus the Rams. The 49ers are undefeated right now, and I don't think it's a fluke. But the Rams, they've been the cream of the crop of that division for a little bit, for a couple years. Uh, Sean McVay, they know how to win games, and they are at home. But I'm loving this 49ers team. I'm going with the 49ers. Numbers down. Um, I don't know what I was trying to say there. Their name is numbers, right? 49ers. 49ers. Um, yeah, man. They've been looking good this year. And I know they're away, but it's not much of a trip, right? They're in L.A. They're in San Francisco. They can eat some kale together and tweet each other. I don't know, San Francisco, right? The apps and Silicon Valley and shit, and L.A. 
with its kombucha lifestyle. Either way, I don't know. I'm I'm a pretty healthy person, so I don't know why I'm shitting on it. But uh, yeah, I just got the 49ers, man. I I love what they're doing. Kyle Shanahan, he is. I I'm, I think he is a better play caller than Sean McVay. And I think there's a little bit of a sibling rivalry with that. You know, who's the best play caller? I got my team to a Super Bowl, and I almost won. I got my team to a Super Bowl, and I almost won. Everyone's praising Sean McVay, but no one's talking about Kyle Shanahan being that guy, being that offensive-minded guru kind of guy. I'm behind you, Shanahan. I believe in you. I'll go off 49ers. Is that racist? Um, so next game, 4 o'clock game. Man, the NFL knows how to pick them. Falcons at the Cardinals. And I am not going to pick the Falcons again, um, ever. That's a rule of mine. So I am going with the Cardinals. You know, they got their, Cardinals got their first taste of win. The taste of blood. There's blood in the water now. Even though Cardinals, Cardinals are a bird and they fly. So we got a good bird matchup. Look at that, Falcons versus Cardinals. In the real world, the Falcon would destroy a Cardinal. But they broke that Cardinal sin. They're playing football, the stupid Falcons. You're a bird. Go to your nest, lay some eggs, and caw. Now, the Falcons, they just they just don't want to seem to win. Dan Quinn is now on the hot seat. I think if they lose this one, he is going to be next to be fired. You know, we already got Jay Gruden done and out. And if the Falcons lose this one, I I think they're going to be looking for a new head coach. Uh, whether that's a smart thing to do, I don't think so. But they are just not producing on the field. Uh, I think they've been in their games. You know, they played with the defense, right? It's their defense. So I'm going with the Cardinals. I think they can take advantage of uh, piss-poor Falcons. Their, their wings, the Falcons' wings are already being clipped. Trying to come up with analogies, but you know, doing analogies on the fly. It's not it's not the easiest thing to try to go. So I'm going with the Cardinals. Next, another four o'clock game. Uh, Cowboys at the Jets. This is going to be a super close one. I didn't know who to pick. It's the Cowboys. Come on, dude. The Jets. I know Sam Darnold's coming back for a mono. I don't think he can do enough to really rally this team. You know, maybe they do rally, and maybe the Cowboys aren't as good as everyone says. But I still think the Cowboys, them boys, are able to pull this one out. Uh, the Jets, uh, they. I was kind of hyped on them before the season, but you know I think that's just the New York media because it's such a huge kind of demographic of people. They get their voice out there, like just hyping up the Jets, hyping up the Jets, hyping up the Jets, until like even I start buying into it. They're bleeding into my soul, and then they're making me believe them. Don't make me believe you. The Jets, they're just not looking good. I don't know when they get C.J. Mosley back. I'm just going with the Cowboys. Go into New York and get the dip. Uh, next 4 o'clock game, Titans at the Broncos. Did I bet on that Cowboys game? Or the, the Cardinals game? Now I'm thinking about it. Look at my handy-dandy notebook. Um... Uh, I bet the Seahawks at minus one and a half. Didn't know if I went over that or not versus the Browns. Um, I bet the, well, I bet the Titans to win. I bet the 49ers to win. Straight up, because both of those teams are underdogs, according to these odds. And I also bet both of those in a separate bet on a parlay. So, if the 49ers and the Titans win, I'll get like 29 bucks on like a $5 bet. That ain't bad. And I think both of those teams feasibly can win because the Titans are playing the Broncos. And the Broncos, what? They won last week in a surprise. Do they have it in them again? Does the Fighting Flacos, the Flucos, do they have it in them? Hmm? I think, you know, the Titans, they are... Either really good or really bad. And I think they come in. What, did they come off a loss? Did they lose last week? I'm pretty sure they did. Um, yeah, last week. Yeah, last week they paid the, played the Bills. And 
That one wasn't super pretty. So I think the Titans come back, and the Bills are better than everyone thinks, and the Broncos are worse than everyone thinks. And so I think the Titans go into Denver, smoke a little bit of weed, and get high on some touchdowns. So next we got the Steelers, the Sunday night game. Uh, Steelers versus the Chargers at the Chargers. This one's tough, man, because Rivers, he knows how to lose. He also knows how to make a baby, but he also knows how to lose. But the Steelers are trash. I know we barely beat them, but that's a divisional game, and we talked about this. But they're trash. They're playing a third-string quarterback, and they're going to be going up against a good defensive line, of people who are good at actually getting to the quarterback. So I think that's when you'll see his, hey, I was an undrafted rookie free agent. That's when you'll... This is when you'll see it. Um, so I, I am picking the Chargers in this one. I'm not too happy about it. Um, I'm kind of nervous about it because I could Steelers versus Chargers. For whatever reason, I feel like that's always like a, like a Steelers win. It's like one of those classic like out of uh, division matchups, like us versus the the Dolphins. It's like we always destroy them. I feel like the Steelers always beat the Chargers. I could just be completely wrong and i saw them beat them once and now every single time they play oh the steelers have their number you know but i think the chargers get this one uh they they came off a terrible loss versus those broncos uh so i i think they come back and i got philip rivers on my fantasy and he got me like what one fucking point last week so please philip rivers do me a favor do yourself a favor and put up some points on these fucking steelers okay so, I think uh, I think I actually got a bet on this game. Uh, where is it? Okay, so the over under was set at forty one, and I went with the over, my man's, because I feel like the Steelers' offense they might be able to put up points on the Chargers' defense. I don't know why. I just think it's one of those things where they will. The Chargers, for some dumb fucking reason, will just leave Juju open. And that's all the Steelers are going to do. They're just going to try to go to Juju every single play. And he's the only one that's going to be able to do anything. I think it's going to be a really ugly game for Steelers offense besides like three or four plays, three or four long plays. I think the Chargers are just going to give up some long-ass plays. Like out of nowhere, they've been stopping them for like a full quarter. And next thing you know, boom, Juju, 80 yards. I think the Chargers, Steelers' defense isn't really that good. Um, and I think the Chargers, hopefully they get it going, get some points on the board. Uh, and I think, you know, the way the Chargers played last week and the Steelers having uh, their third-string quarterback in, you know, they set the over-under at 41, which is that's typically a lower uh, over-under number. So I'm going with the over. I, I could see this, you know, like, 25, 25, 21, 21. That gets the over, right? That's 42 points, my mans. Yeah, so I could see 21, 21. Both teams being able to put up 21, that is. Uh, so, yeah, Chargers in this one. Faux show. Uh, next, on Monday night, we've got Lions at the Packers. And I was struggling with this one because this is a divisional game. It's on Monday night, Aaron Rodgers versus Matt Stafford. Uh, the Lions subtly killing it, played the Chiefs really well. Uh, they've been playing better than I thought. I thought the Lions were going to be vying for that first overall pick. But no, I was wrong. Riddle me that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been wrong about the Lions. I will be the first to tell you because... It'd be weird if anybody else told you that I was wrong. Who's telling you this? Who knows? Who 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 told you? But uh, I I am picking the Packers in this one. Aaron Rodgers under the lights. Um, Packers versus Lions divisional matchup. You got to give it to the man, Aaron Rodgers himself. The 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 yeah uh, the Packers. They've got a great defense. Uh, they're looking good on offense. They just know how to get it done. Um, I'm not sure if I bet this game. Uh, I'm not seeing it. Nope, I did not put any bets on this game. That's usually it's not because it's usually because I didn't like the numbers. You know what I think is gonna happen. 
didn't go with the numbers. I don't know what the numbers are, so I don't want to say that and then look at the numbers and be like, oh, never mind. Um, so I just think uh, I just think the Packers will pull this one off. I think it's going to be a closer game. Uh, I think it could be a high-scoring game, and I think I was I think the number like the over/under was set in the 50s um, when I was looking at it. So maybe it it might not be. I don't know. I don't know. I, sh- I can look it up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get on to the next game, the final game in this week. So Packers win. Aaron Rodgers, you can talk to your dad. He's proud of you now because you defeated the lion. You got the monkey off your back, and now you're taming a lion? So you can talk to your dad? Either way, he's a fudge packer. Uh, so last but not least, the Ravens. Versus the Bengals. The Bengals are coming to town, baby. And I already did a podcast about this. But, you know, I didn't give an answer. I said I was nervous, right? I said I was nervous about this game. But I'm picking the Ravens, God damn it. They are at home. The Bengals are 0-5. The Ravens have Lamar Jackson. Why would I pick the Bengals to win? Uh, I am going to pick. I'm just going to tell you now. I am picking the Ravens each and every week because I think they go over eight, uh, go over 500. You know, I think they they could go 10 and six, 11 and five. So if I pick them every week, I will by the end of the year, you know, uh, cumulatively, cu- cumulative, 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 cumulatively. Oh God, I can't even. Fucking say that word. Yeah, damn. What's up, school? How are you? Goodbye. I'm done with you. Um, yeah, I got the Ravens. I, so I, if, if I pick them every week, right, I will have their record. And hopefully it's a better record than even what I predicted. You know, 11-5, I'd be happy with that overall result. That's a good week for me in the game picks. So, you know, if I can go 11-5 with each team, right, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey, oh. So yeah, I am going with the Ravens on this one for all the reasons that you've already known about that I've been talking about this whole goddamn year. Um, I did place a bet on this game at the casino. What did I do? Ooh, I did a parlay with this game. Okay, so I bet the over at 48. So I think, you know, the Ravens defense, they haven't been able to stop much. And I think the the Bengals defensive line, they cannot stop the run. So I think we will run the ball for over 200 yards, and that will open up the long pass. And I think we'll get that going, and I think we can put up a lot of points this game. I think we'll be able to put up over 30, and I think if, since we go over 30, I think the, the Bengals are going to be right there with us. Honestly, I think our defense... For whatever reason, they just don't know how to do it. Um, I don't think this is going to be a blowout in any stretch. So the parlay, I bet the over at 48, and I bet the Bengals in the spread at plus 12. So we just, we have to cum- cumulatively, god damn, why is that word coming up? Just all together now, uh, all together, the teams, they got to score 48 total, and the Bengals have to be within 12. Uh, that doesn't seem ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what our record is in the spread, but I don't think we've been covering the spread at all. We've been favorited, I'm pretty sure, in each game. Uh, the only time we covered the spread was in the Dolphins game, and that was we, we fucking covered that. And so every single week after that, it's still responding to that somewhat, you know? So, yeah, I'm taking the Ravens. Hopefully, you know, hopefully it is a high-scoring game and the Bengals are within 12, and then I'll get my money. Five dollar bet pays out eighteen bucks. That ain't too shabby, right? Right? So that's what's up. Yeah, I don't know if I <clears throat> talked about it. Went nine and six last week. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um Yeah, man, those are those are my game picks. So just run down again. The teams that I have winning, I'll just list them down. I got the Bucks, the Vikings, the Redskins, Chiefs, Saints. Seahawks, 49ers, Cardinals, Cowboys, Titans, Chargers, Packers, Patriots, and 
They're motherfucking Ravens. So those are the teams that I have winning uh, this week. So let's hope for let's hope for a good record. So with that being said, I bid you a go Ravens and uh, happy hunting. Have a happy football, happy birthday. I don't know. I don't know how to sign up. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I don't even know if I s- said that already. Um, if you're on a podcasting app, please download. Uh, give me a rating. If you're listening on YouTube, uh, subscribe on iTunes. That helps me a lot. I don't know how, but subscriptions, they count. I feel like a middle schooler trying to sell magazine subscriptions. But do they still do that? I doubt so. The internet's a thing. So, with that being said, go... Ravens.